Lions Tour, the third and final test. The decider is on this weekend, in case you somehow missed that news. Uh, we'll go over the squads, which I'll put in the description. Some of the stats, the predictions, and um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go out. My voice is still on the mend. It is better than it was yesterday and better than it was the day before. But uh, excuse me if I still sound like I have swallowed a frog. Uh, speaking of frogs... I uh, probably shouldn't say that. It's probably offensive this day and age. But uh, Matthew Raynell is the uh, the ref for this one. He will have a lot of pressure on him, given how things have gone with the first two tests. But let's hope we're not talking too much about him come the end of the game uh, this Saturday. It is Saturday, 6 o'clock local time at Cape Town Stadium. Uh, the pitch is still a bit of a worry for mine. Uh, I talked a little bit about the pitch in the previous videos. It has been an issue. Uh, it continues to tear up. I know guys have said... Uh, this pitch wasn't really made for rugby. Uh, there's been a lot of rain, so I'm kind of hoping, I haven't checked the weather forecast, I'm kind of hoping there's been a bit finer weather over in uh, in Cape Town the last kind of seven days or so. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an issue and maybe some of the reasons that we've seen some of the selections that we have. But uh, yeah, four o'clock in the morning for me here in New Zealand, kind of getting used to that at this point. Uh, we've had two games already. Game one, 22-17. The Lions were winners in that one. Game 2, 27-9. The Springboks bounced back pretty convincingly. Um, so yeah, as I said, we're kind of all set for this third and final game. Which will decide the fate of the tour. Unless it finishes in a draw. Anyway, we will see. Uh, for the Springboks, we see the same front row as last week. It's Kitsoff, it's uh, Mbunambi, and it's Malherba. They proved pretty useful. Uh, in the game last week, so I don't see any reason to change them. And uh, yeah, Jacques Nina has kind of kept things steady as she goes. Ibnet Sabeth and Lutiaka are the second row this week. Now remember, with Peter Steph Dutoy being out injured, it's a pretty big blow to the Springboks. Um, that has meant that they've moved Franco Mostert to the back row. He's going to fill in. Uh, in that number seven jersey on the blind side. So, um, yeah, Diaka had a huge impact when he came on last week. And I don't I don't see any reason why you wouldn't start him, uh, to be fair, man. He's uh, he's a proper good ball handler. His lineup execution has been phenomenal. And he seems to be back fully fit now. Like, he kind of went into this tour under a bit of an injury cloud. So, yeah, no reason not to play him. Uh, Mostert's obviously a bit of a different player from Peter Steph Dutoy, but... You still do get that kind of work rate out of Franco Mostert. So, um, Peter Steph went off pretty early last week. So, it's um, it's kind of not going to be foreign territory for Franco Mostert to be there. Uh, Colisi is still at six. And he had a huge game last week. Tackled. and I mean, in a game which didn't have a lot of carries. He was doing pretty well with his carries. So, uh, try saving tackle. Um, people wanted me to go back and look at that one on, on Henshaw where his arm was under there. I have gone back and looked at it. Man, that was... Even more phenomenal than I uh, first thought on kind of first viewing. And uh, Visa is still there at number eight. Had a few handling errors last week, although still, you know, got on top of a few big collisions. So uh, hopefully he'll have a better game than he did, even though he wasn't kind of terrible. Um, just, you know, as I said, a few handling errors, which he'd like to clean up. Now, the big thing is um, that Faf de Klerk is injured. That's, that's a pretty big blow for the Springboks because he for the last few years, man, has kind of been just getting the lion's share of those minutes in, in Springboks colors, man. Like, he has some games gone the full 80. Other times, you know, he'll get taken off in the last few. But his ability to defend, to make guys, you know, life's miserable when he shoots out of the line, uh, his ability to box kick and distribute has just been so crucial to everything the Springboks have been doing. And it's reflected in the amount of game time he's got. Well, he's injured. So he's unavailable. Corbus uh, Reinach is going to stand stand in, and um, he's kind of no he's no slouch man. So it's not bad news to have Corbus Reinach starting, but just in terms of Springboks kind of gameplay and continuity, it's a blow undoubtedly. So um, Reinach and Polo play together in front, so that's kind of a bit of an added kind of free combination that they get. Um, Reinach has certainly got a pretty bloody good running game about him, so he may test the Lions in areas that Faf didn't test. But uh, likewise, that may give the Lions opportunities in other areas. We will see. I mean, as I said, I wouldn't be disappointed to have Corbus Ronak starting for my team. 
So, yeah, he's there at number nine. Pollard continues to 10. Uh, Dale Ender and Arm were phenomenal last week at 12 and 13, respectively, and they continue on. No reason not to play those guys, man. They have they have gone from kind of like a, a potentially pretty good midfield to one of the best midfields in the world. Look, I know Dale, um, Dale Ender used to get a lot of stick for not passing the ball, and uh, it seems to have taken people a weirdly long time to realize that Lukan Arm. Um, um, like reads the game just so beautifully, but I think pretty much everybody's on board at this point. Um, I probably rated him more as a defensive 13 than a kind of link-up man when I first started watching him, but he's just doing both so well. So if anybody thinks he's underrated, I don't know, man. I haven't seen anybody say anything but good stuff about Lacanyam for a long time. So uh, that's 12 and 13 sorted. Mpimpi, Colby, and LaRue is the same back three. Uh, obviously, we saw Mpimpi get some... Some uh, way got over the whitewash um, with that kick from Pollard last week, so he has been uh, he has been very slick as well. And um, you know, even the the talk for Afalele Fassi getting the crack has kind of died down as the team has kind of uh, started tracking pretty well. Although, I mean, you will feel bad for a lot of the guys that got called into the Springbok team that aren't going to get a crack against the Lions. But as kind of uh, Coach Ninaba has been saying. This is only the start of the campaign for 2021, man. They've got the rugby championship just around the corner. So, yeah, guys that aren't getting the crack now will certainly be getting the crack in a few weeks' time. Uh, the bench is Marks and Yukane and Cock, which is the same as last week, and those guys had a huge impact. Uh, in Yukane at scrum time was absolutely a proper unit. Uh, Van Staden and Smith, I don't think Van Staden got a lot of minutes last week, but those two guys there, I mean, there's not really uh, a proper lock cover, but having Mostert starting means you've got another lock essentially on the field. So you start him with three locks and two Lucy's on the bench. Uh, and interestingly, they're going with three backs. It's not a 6-2 split. Uh, and it's also missing Dwayne Vermeulen. Dwayne Vermeulen got called into the squad, um, but didn't kind of return to play in time. Uh, Coach Nina but basically said, you know, first step for him is to get back training, to get back fit, and then they will look at playing it. It was kind of a bit rushed to chuck him in. Uh, even Warren Gatlin said in the press conference, uh, when he was asked, like, you know, what he thought about facing Vermeulen, he kind of said, I don't think he'll be starting. He initially didn't think he'd be playing. He thought if he started, if he's in the team, he's probably only going to be on the bench. So, um, yeah, Warren Warren called that one. There you go. Uh, Herschel Yankees, Mornay Stain, and Damian Willems are there as the the backs cover. Um, Mornay, man, <laughs> the dude did it, like, 12 years ago. And he is there for this third and final decider. Will he have a chance to, to crack a penalty from halfway to decide the series? Um, probably not, but he's certainly a guy who's been there and literally done it before. So, yeah, what a, what a story that is to have them there. But, uh, yeah, it is an interesting one for the Springboks to make some of those changes. I think everybody would have called um, the 6-2 split coming. But it is not to be this week after it was so effective last week for the Lions. They've made a few more changes than what the Springboks have. Uh, Wynn Jones, after kind of sitting the first two games out, he was initially named in that first game. Uh, he he is back. He is back and he's starting at loose head. And he looked he looked good when he played So uh, in the, the kind of warm-up game. So... Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a boost for the Lions. Owens is alongside him. He starts after being on the bench last week, and Furlong is still there at tight head. Uh, Warren Gatlin kind of mentioned that he wanted to start Wynn Jones and Ken Owens together, so part of me thinks that Owens is kind of riding the coattails of Jones there, because I'm not sure, based on last week's performance, that Owens is the starting guy. I think a couple of lineouts went astray, but... Um, yeah, Gatlin's certainly got a lot more coaching experience than me, so we'll go with that. Uh, Etoje and Alan Wynn jones are still there as the locks. I do feel for the guys who haven't got any game time. Henderson, Hill, you know, these guys have, have traveled. And for the last three weeks, they've kind of been twiddling their thumbs. Uh, Henderson, I thought, was in proper good form as well. So that's, that's disappointing, but there's a bit of consistency there from Getz, which is something that I guess in terms of the Lions is the one thing that they struggle uh, is to get that kind of chemistry with players. So maybe consistency is the order of the day. It's just unfortunate with no midweek games, these guys have literally only been able to train up, you know, the guys who actually play in the tests. Uh, Laws, Curry and Conan is the same back row as well. So the only real change in the forward pack is, is when Jones coming in 
and uh, and Owens you know getting the start instead of being on the bench. Um, Price and Bigger is the 19 combo, so Bigger uh, gets another crack, and it's interesting because Gats talked about wanting to play more expansive rugby, and I would have thought, bro, you got you got Finn Russell, <laughs> he's like he's the king of expansive rugby, but maybe uh, Gats is just talking slightly more expansive than last week, which which wouldn't be all that difficult. Um, I think they, there was a stat that Bigger only passed the ball like three times, which is not a lot. But again, there was a lot of kicking in last week's game, which we can expect to see more of this week, I would imagine. Uh, Price will probably be, I guess, slightly quicker than uh, what we see from, from Murray. I think the, the plan with Murray last week maybe didn't quite pay off. And as I mentioned, Getz wants to play more expensive, maybe Price is the man for that job. Uh, Aki and Henshaw is the midfield combo, so Aki comes into the 23. After not featuring in the first two tests, Henshaw shifts from 12 to 13, so Chris Harris is the guy who gets the chop after just appearing in that one game. Uh, essentially gets said pretty much directly that Aki is there to combat Dale Linde. He wants to negate that physical presence that Dale Linde has and also kind of talked up our key zone kind of ball playing skills as well. Um, Van der Merwe, Adams, and Williams are the back three. And the back three is an area that the Lions really struggled with last week. You know, they, they just couldn't take the high balls. Uh, a lot of people seem confused as to why Watson's been dropped. I'm not that confused because he dropped at least, was it three? Not great under the high ball. And maybe the pitch just isn't that conducive to him get his footwork going because a lot of guys have been losing their footing. Likewise, Hogg. Hogg kind of pays the price for struggling a wee bit, I think, under the high ball last week. So Williams is a pretty secure pair of hands in that regard. So is Adams. People will say Van der Merwe is lucky. Uh, there seems to be a wee bit of anti-Scottish sentiment going amongst the squad. I don't think Van der Merwe was any worse than, than Hogg. I know he's Scottish as well. Or, um, or Watson last week. They all struggled. But definitely, we haven't seen the best of um, of Van der Merwe in terms of going forward, being that blockbusting ball carrier. But likewise, we haven't really seen the best of Colby either. He's been kept relatively quiet. Mapimpi has been kind of the outstanding winger of the first two tests anyway. So, yeah, um, they will need to be better in that department, absolutely. And Gatlin himself said that they struggled in that area. Uh, the bench has got Cowan Dickey, Vuni Pola, and Sinclair, so Sinclair is still able to play after being sighted. His sighting was a bit of a weird one. There was apparent bite. That was the accusation, but it was such a weird... If you watched the video, you couldn't really see anything. Like, of all the things that you expected to get sighted from test number two, it probably wasn't Kyle Sinclair. But anyway, he's cleared to play. So it's an all-English front row replacement, and that's, again, what Gats has kind of talked up. He talked up the combinations, so Aki and Henshaw know each other pretty well. Uh, Wynn Jones and Ken Owens, uh, Cowan Dickey and Vili all these guys, he talked up the combos. And again, it's, it's what the Lions don't have naturally built into them. It's something they have to build in such a short space of time. Uh, Adam Baird is there, so he replaces Tyke Byrne. Tyke Byrne's been pretty unlucky. He didn't get a lot of minutes. Um, maybe a little bit underutilized, I feel, but Adam Baird is there again. Gats is talking about negating what the South Africans are doing. He's there to stop their maul. No bones about it. That's pretty much directly what Gats said, and that makes sense because he is such a tall man. He's able to get his arms over and, um, yeah, disrupt. So he's there, and then Sam Simmons gets his first test as well. Uh, X Factor is what Gats said. So likewise, Finn Russell. It's a pretty exciting bench. Gats has talked about playing expansive, so it's... It's interesting, he didn't he didn't go full expansive and, and start the likes of Russell and... Um, and Simmons and potentially some others, but uh, he has got them on the bench to, to roll the dice anyway. So Falatau misses out, Tyke Byrne, like I mentioned, Owen Farrell. Uh, Murray drops to the bench. Elliot Daly is still there. I will be interested to see who does the goal kicking if, uh, if Russell replaces Bigger. Uh, does Daly ever do much kicking, which isn't huge long-range stuff? I don't think I've ever seen him take kind of shortish range kicks. It'd be interesting if it came down to a penalty in the last minute with... With the Lions having to win it, who's going to take the kick? Because I've seen Murray kick before. I've seen Russell kick. I've seen Daly kick. Who is the best kicker of these guys? You guys have to let me know because I don't watch enough. But yeah, like I said, I do feel for some of the guys who aren't going to get a game. Jamie George is not going to get a game. Um, you know, Lewis Rizam is not going to get a game, although he's still he's still pretty young. Um, Gareth Davis, 
Josh Navidi, all, all these guys. Marcus Smith was probably never going to get a game based on the way uh, Gats talked about him at the start of the tournament anyway. But um, yeah, you do got to feel for them. Now the head-to-head -head stuff and the stats do tell an interesting story because you look at game one, game two. Game one, knock-ons was 11-6. to six. The Springboks making, you know, almost double. Uh, game two was 11-4 to four with the, the Lions making, you know, almost triple. And both games, the side which had the horrendous amount of knock-ons was the losing one. Position and territory. Uh, the side which dominated the first half position and territory is the side that ended up losing. The Springboks went into game one, first half, looking pretty sweet. Likewise, the Lions in the second game, and then both games saw a distinct turnaround so that the position and territory stats kind of evened out, but they were kind of both game of two halves. Uh, clean breaks, 6-2 to two for South Africa in game one, and they lost. Game two was 2-1, to one, which is pretty bloody low, but the side, the side which had more clean breaks is the side that ended up losing the game. Weird stats. Uh, turnovers won, though. Game one, the Lions win eight. The Springboks win six. Lions win it. Game two, the Springboks win six. The Lions only get two. And the Springboks won that one. So, I don't know. There just seems to be kind of a few little interesting stats. Don't knock the ball on. Win turnovers. <laughs> That's pretty easy stuff to say. But uh, maybe a bit harder to execute. We will see. Uh, in terms of the predictions for this one, the bookies have got the Springboks' as favorite. Kind of no surprises after their dominant performance last week. By three points is what they are saying. And the rugby forecast algorithm has changed its prediction by one point from last week. Instead of Springboks by one, they are doubling down and saying Springboks by two. So either way, it's predicted to be a pretty close one. Uh, I hope the pitch holds up. As I mentioned, I hope the... Uh, the ref is not much of a talking point come the end of the game. I hope it's a good game of rugby. Um, Reinach to make an impression, hopefully. Um, yeah, like Finn Russell to get some proper minutes. I can dream, can't I? Expansive rugby. The intensity has always been there. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that for sure. I know there's been kind of detractors about the tour and um, a few bit of negative vibes, man. But this is a deciding game in a Lions tour. We only get this once every four years so let's enjoy this game you will not see the lions play in the spring box for another 12 years so yeah let's enjoy this game bloody hell 12 years my son is going to be like 17 that's a scary thought so um yeah let's enjoy the game i hope it's a cracker i hope it's tight i hope it goes 80 minutes finn russell or mornay stain to take a match winning kick at the end it'll be glorious but anyway you guys let me know your thoughts, and I will talk to you again soon. See you later.